Hey guys, uh, as a request from uh, my buddy uh, I saw in your face, um, I'm going to do a full review on the uh, Gigabyte G31M-ES2L. This is a uh, Socket 775 motherboard. Um, actually one of the cheaper Gigabyte ones that you can buy. This one uh, with shipping cost me about $60 from Newegg. Uh, probably one of the best low-end boards that uh, you can buy. It's it's actually packed with tons of features for being such a cheap board. Um, there are some pros and cons. I'm going to try to cover a little bit on both. Um, I have had this board for probably about six weeks now and have, haven't had any problems with it. It's been a piece of cake to install Windows and uh, run any games on that I've had to. Um, It'll run a Core 2 Duo, it'll run a Quad Core, uh, it'll also run the uh, older Intel Pentium Ds. Okay, well, first off, let's look at some of the features from it. It has uh, four serial ATA connectors for your drives. That, that's plenty for most people. You could always put an add-on on if you need it. Um, one IDE connector, uh, then your 24-pin. Um, two memory slots, which is a bit of a disadvantage. This particular one, uh, I believe, only runs four gigs maximum. It's got two slots, and you can put two meg chips into each one. That's a bit of a disadvantage, unfortunately. It, it does have a 16x PCI Express connector, and also a 1x PCI connector if you wanted to add a sound card or modem or what have you. But uh, we're going to spin it around the back here so you can see the connectors that it comes with and some of the nice advantages to it. Uh, for instance, this has uh, onboard video. Uh, it's the Intel, I think it's the GMA 3100. Not great, good for browsing the web, you know, maybe even some uh, flash game stuff like that. Not a great gaming chip. You definitely want to add another card um, if you really want to play some decent games with it anyway. It does come with Gigabyte LAN, which is nice for a super fast network connection for uh, transferring files. Uh, unfortunately, it only has your standard uh, audio on it. There's no uh, 5.1 surround or 7.1 surround. It's just a uh, stereo audio connector so your person might want to take advantage of that 1x slot and uh, get a decent video card uh, creative FX or something of that sort okay on to uh, some of the other features of it this is a great board for overclocking it's probably the simplest one I've used uh, that didn't require a lot of fussing around to get some pretty decent speeds out of it it's not as fickle as some of the higher end boards where you have to keep messing with a tenth of a volt here and there to uh, get it stable. It was very stable, very easy to overclock. A uh, couple of disadvantages to it, for one thing, I'm not real impressed with their Northbridge heatsink. Um, not a very nice setup for a board that's really designed for overclocking. And you definitely need to get some cooling on that, maybe remove it, put a water block, or get a uh, inch and a half fan like an older socket 7 CPU fan and mount it on there I will actually be adding something on there to uh, cool it down same thing with the south bridge it's almost non-existent it's uh, such a cheesy heat sink on there that's kind of a shame I think that lessens the quality of the board uh, I know it's a cheap board you can't really expect much but performance wise it's it's such a good performer I think with some better cooling they uh, could have really made a much nicer board out of it. But uh, we'll, we'll check into how we can cool this a little bit better. But uh, it's a micro ATX form factor, so it is tiny. Um, you can kind of get an idea. I can almost cover it with my whole hand. My uh, video card itself was almost as big as the whole motherboard. So that uh, gives you some idea of just how small it is. You can get by with a fairly small case, a micro case, a standard ATX would be fine. You don't even need a full tower to run it. Um, I can't really think of uh, 
much else I can say about it right now. It has solid state capacitors and ferrites. Um, the construction on the board itself is actually pretty decent. Um, the quality looks pretty good. But uh, I would highly recommend it for the price range. Even if it's just something you want to play around with to do some overclocking, it's well worth the price just to test it out, play around with it, uh, you know, without going out and buying yourself a real nice high-end board and then end up uh, wrecking it, testing some overclocks and that sort of thing with it. There's uh, two fan connectors on the board. They got one on the bottom for your system fan and then, of course, your CPU connector up there. Pretty basic. Uh, usually you'll see boards with a few more connectors for fans. I mean, not a big deal. You can certainly have Molex fans or something else in the case. So you don't really need them. And I suppose running any more voltage through it would probably uh, just raise your temperatures. And uh, everything else is pretty basic. You know, your USBs and your front connectors and stuff are pretty similar there. Um, I've been real happy with it. The I, I forgot to mention on the DDR RAM. Not only is it only four gigs, but it is uh, DDR2800. That's another drawback. You can't run the 1066 or higher in it. It will run the 800, but I've also found that it'll run the uh, the uh, 533. Is it or 566? the older, slower DDR2 anyway, because uh, that's what I happen to have laying around, and it used it just fine, fortunately. But uh, that's it for now. Uh, if you guys have any questions about these, or, you know, if there's something I missed that you wanted me to, uh, you know, get a little more info on or something for you, certainly uh, put a comment in. I will check it and get back to you and give you any information you might need, but as far as a solid board for $60, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.